This is the story of DMT, or, or dimethyltryptamine, a simple compound found throughout nature which has profound <laughs> effects on human consciousness. All right. I feel like this is just something that I want to put out there. Um, why I've stopped making psychedelic content, plant medicine related content, uh, experiences, sharing stories, things like that. <clears throat> I'm going to try to make it simple and concise and all that because it is kind of simple. So, uh, way back when, when I started making those videos, one of my main drives and goals was to just simply reduce the stigma around it and have an intelligent conversation about it. Um, <clears throat> And have a, you know, like a level-headed conversation to open the doors for conversation. And uh, that was probably 2015, you know, maybe in 2013, 14, I started learning about the plant medicines. You know, all these ancient, uh, ancient tools, I guess you could call them, that cultures have been using for hundreds, thousands of years, you know. And... You know, I thought it was just a little weird, a little sus, you know, if uh, the way, you know, there's some stories out there of people having absolutely amazing experiences and soulful, beautiful, rich experiences on things like ayahuasca and mushrooms and things like that. And then I saw, you know, the government and the mainstream status quo being like, hey, you're going to fucking turn into an orange and you want to peel yourself and jump out of a window. And it's like, <laughs> OK, what's going on here? There's something obviously something's happening there's a there's a big space between these people and that people so i wanted to help be a part of opening the door for conversation between those two groups and just everybody right um i've always i guess i haven't always i've, I've i grew up being really quiet and just observant you know i think that's my baseline is just to be at peace and observant <clears throat> but once I started learning learning about this stuff and I had my own experiences, you know, my first cannabis experience was absolutely magnificent and <laughs> jaw dropping and just like, wow. Oh, so this is what it is, really. Um, just to give you a little backstory, I was in New Mexico. I smoked with a girlfriend of mine and, you know, I just I made a video about this, but basically my imagination was just so rich and vibrant. You know, everything in my mind was very visual um, and I could just imagine things extremely clearly and with a lot of color, you know, with a lot of sharpness, with a lot of anything that I wanted. It was just a little bit extra, you know. And so from the get go, I was like, oh, my God, this is uh, why are people saying that this, you know, makes you lazy or this or that? You know, I, I felt like there was something that just wasn't right here. <clears throat> so I kept going. I researched mushrooms and uh, I had a, my first mushroom experience was a pretty high dose. I mean, it was comparable to a five grams. It was four grams of some really potent shit, you know, and I just went all in. And my intention was to uh, experience the full depth of what mushrooms had to offer, what it was. You know, I wanted to figure out what the fuck this was. So I just went all in. <clears throat> I don't know if the video's still up, but I made a trip report sort of thing about it. And it was incredible. You know, some of it was challenging. I faced a lot of my feelings of, you know, my own insecurities and my own fears and things like that. But then I also found what I was excited about in life. You know, that that substance helped me very clearly uh, feel and sense and get to know what I'm excited about, you know, in the moment during that experience. But also, you know, I just I grew and um strengthened a connection to my excitement from my own natural honest really honest excitement and I, f I further developed a love for um getting to know myself and expressing myself you know um, i realized and found that i'm pretty damn good uh you know skilled at feeling the things within me and putting it into words and putting it into music and things like that um <clears throat> So just to go through a few things, uh, again, I just, I wanted to help open the door for conversation and I knew that the truth was going to come out eventually. You know, I just knew that truth is basically, I've, I've kind of lived by this principle 
throughout my life and especially recently if you were to imagine a, tr a structure one made of truth and one made with a little bit of lies sketchiness and things like that the one made of truth is holy h-o-l-y but it is also whole w-h-o-l-e um, that structure is the most stable structure truth is the most stable structure and it will live on far beyond um, structures that are made you know of unholy principles of things that are not whole you know unholy u-n-h-o-l-y but also unholy u-n-w-h-o-l-e why um for sake of explanation um so when you have a structure that's made not whole there's holes within it there is flaws there is this and that it's going to collapse far before a structure of truth and that might be why the good always wins in the end, you know, because their structures last much longer. They can uh, maintain and retain and survive more harsh storms, so to speak. <clears throat> and now, you know, um, if you if you think about an observer just looking in, yeah, maybe they might instantly see that I can express myself decently well and they might get, you know, attached and grabbed and things like that. But um I think I, I played my part in that, in this scene, to start the conversation. And now, if we just switch over to this, Aaron Rodgers, August 3rd, 2022, talks about his journey with ayahuasca. Um, this dude is a back-to-back -back MVP in the NFL. He went through, you know, exploring, finding himself, you know, getting to love himself, things like that. I haven't watched this whole thing. But <clears throat> if you watch him on the Pat McAfee show, you can tell that he's pretty, uh, pretty heady and, uh, you know, pays attention and takes some time to really figure some shit out. It's a beautiful thing. A back-to-back -back MVP right now, reigning MVP, I think, um, going on, you know, going on a podcast with Aubrey Marcus, who's very connected with Joe Rogan, you know, Aaron Rodgers is connected with Joe Rogan, things like that. Um, Mike Tyson, a few years ago, talked about DMT on fucking ESPN. All right, the conversations are happening. Three or four months ago that you found a place. Uh, you know, Ron White last year talk, you know, had an ayahuasca experience and stopped drinking, stopped smoking. I don't know, I think he might still smoke cigars or whatever, but essentially cold turkey fucking whiskey and tequila or whatever I think is tequila that he's been drinking for 50, 60 years. <coughs> and <coughs> these examples are all fucking over the place. You just type in Joe Rogan DMT. There's dozens and dozens of different famous people, different um, respected people within society, different creative people, all with you know hundreds of thousands, millions of views. Um, this shit is commonplace. Three days ago, Tim Dillon has its story, whatever. This shit is just so commonplace, and you know, people are talking about it. Yeah, it's like nobody's committing crimes on mushrooms. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you supporting psychedelics? Yeah. You are. I think like some of the psychedelics can be pretty helpful for like um, uh, PTSD and like like, yeah. like serious like uh, psychological trauma and depression. And um, I'd say like my personal opinion is like psychedelics are like way better for treating depression than a lot of like the SSRIs and stuff that are given out. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean like like a, a lot of the sort of antidepressant drugs just turn you to a zombie. Not only that. But there are legitimate scientists doing actual work with this stuff now. You know, it doesn't, you know, there's people like Psych Substance, and I, I almost went in this direction of doing my own little experiments and, you know, trying microdosing for a month and taking notes and all this kind of stuff and seeing how it affected me, which would just be a totally subjective thing. And, and a lot of these experiences are very subjective. Um, so... There's so much good content out there that I feel like I don't need to be that one little, uh, you know, person who tells a story about an experience they had. You know, there's only so many stories you can say to really realize and come to find that there's just generally a common theme, theme about almost all of them. And if not, it's generally just kind of like a clickbaity thing that you can, you know, grab some eyes. And... That, co that comes to another point. I don't really enjoy 
fighting for eyeballs, fighting for attention. Um, in the YouTube scene, you in a social media scene, you're basically competing against other people for attention. And I don't like to do that. You know, I just, I care about information. I care about beauty. I care about love and enjoying our fucking time on this planet. You know, it's pretty simple. Um, I don't care about making a thumbnail that's going to grab a hundred more people's eyes than a different thumbnail. You know, I don't care about designing that sort of thing. I don't care about this or that. I just want to enjoy life and <clears throat> do, do what I love and share time with the people that I love. <clears throat> so, yeah, I found <laughs> music to be something that you know, if you don't want to listen to words, you can listen to sound. And I'm putting, you know, I'm transposing, transforming my use of words. And also still using them, but turning it into music. I think that is going to help people just innately feel what I'm trying to say. And not just, you know, require an intellectual mind to absorb all of these words. Um... And obviously there's going to be lyrics in the songs and things like that, but it'll be simple and fundamental and not too complicated and, you know, it'll vibe with the music. So it'll just be a, you know, a visceral feeling that we all get and the truth and knowing that's just instant with music. <clears throat> um, so that's basically it. I don't know if there's really anything else to say. Um, I've made, <laughs> I have a list of video ideas. You know, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but... It's getting to be like 30 videos long, but I just, you know, something about the YouTube scene is this is not a free world. YouTube is not a free world. Um, I think it was like back in 2017, 18, maybe even 16, they started shadow banning people and, you know, blacklisting and, you know, blacklisting content. I saw viral videos that I, that, that I had that were popping off, you know, reaching 10, 20, 30,000 views a day, all of a sudden just get chopped off instantly. Um, taken off the YouTube algorithms of recommendation recommending that video to other people um, and that was really discouraging because you know I was already not really you know I was getting paid pennies and getting paid a few dollars here and there for content and obviously you know I didn't put a shit ton of effort into it but it does take organization it does take time it does take an effort to express yourself and really focus on a vision and express it and ex express it you know it takes time to develop the ability to express language, you know, really. Um, but there's not much return to it, <laughs> you know, there, there isn't. Um, it's unfortunate that YouTube has to, um, you know, hurt some people or diminish their ability to share and experience and express, express their experiences. And uh, I just, you know, I, the... I, I just don't care about fighting for attention, you know. <laughs> I could do it, but I don't like it. I really don't. I don't feel any sense of pride about it. I don't, and I don't generally feel prideful, but um, I don't care about that. I really don't. And I think there's so many people that are, sh you know, shining the light, spreading the information. I mean, for Christ's sakes, fucking Mike Tyson was tripping on, like, <laughs> multiple grams on Logan Paul's on Logan Paul's podcast. The first thing he said when he walked in, <laughs> can I say, anybody got any mushrooms? That was the first. Is, yeah, well, no, I said. Something. It's insane. Where is There you go. That's nothing. Tell him. I used to do bags. <laughs> Dude. Yo, this this is crazy. For a sec, there's something together. You know? See, this is basically a live trip report on a long form conversation. And he, he weaves with it beautifully. Um, what more can I do? You know, I don't really care to do any more at this point. <clears throat> Also, uh, kind of unrelated. I don't know if I should even get into it, but I'm do I'm 
going to be participating in a job next year that uh, I need to be pretty sober for and looking forward to a change. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to sense if there's anything else. I think that's it. I think people are doing a great job. I mean, if, if, if people don't see this yet, you know, like all of these people, essentially, if you, co if you combine all of these videos and their view counts, hundreds of millions of views, maybe even a billion views, probably a billion views, maybe, you know, more than that, um, maybe not unique billion, but hundreds of millions of respected accomplished individuals talking about their experiences with plant medicines with psychedelics with mushrooms with whatever um and generally many of them very positive positive. and if not positive a lot of these people are aware enough to realize like hey i was in this time in my life i was in this setting and i didn't you know i experienced something <laughs> showed me this showed me some truth but this and that you know aware enough to be respectful about it um so I think the stigma is definitely reduced. I think <laughs> Joe Rogan has done a great job with that. <laughs> and his hundreds of guests at this point that have talked about their experiences. <clears throat> and I guess that's it, you know. I am I play music, guitar, pretty much every day. Um, I love it. I'm developing and growing that. Um, the songs are starting to come together. You know, I play guitar not to play somebody else's music. I play the guitar to express myself, to further express myself, and to love what I'm experiencing in life, and essentially just be a, you know, a recombinatory, uh, revibrating, I don't know, <laughs> capacitor, and I don't know, fucking I don't know. The songs are starting to form, and I knew it would happen just if I keep walking down that path of expressing myself, I'm going to desire a further expression of myself, which turns from basic sounds into, you know, an organization of sounds, which turn into a weaving of language with the sounds and beyond. Whatever happens, it's growing. It's going to happen. As long as I'm alive, it's going to happen. <clears throat> so I guess that's it. Sayonara. How are you guys doing? It's been a minute. <laughs> Any hoozles? Goddamn people outside in the door. Fucking. <laughs> Alright, I guess that's it. Bye.